with a field goal try wide right. And the young eyes wide open. Another year, another try wide right. Another title chance call. It's become a legend, a challenge, a cure needed for the Florida State Seminole. Freshman Scott Bentley has picked up the gauntlet, and the day is here. Number three, Miami. Number one, Florida State. Hello again, everybody. Keith Jackson. This is the first in a series of games that probably deserve the label game of the century. Most of them are going to be right here on ABC Sports, all but one. Now, let's look at what happens after our game of the century today between the Hurricanes and the Seminoles. You've got important ball games that will echo all the way to the end of the year. Check your local ABC station or call your cable operator for pay-per-view. We'll have Bob Greasy's comments pre-game in just a moment. Lynn Swan, another All-American All-Pro, joins us reporting from the field. And now for the next installment in our continuing feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. Seminoles at the top of the poll since the first preseason vote back in August. They're 5 0. And today's game with the Miami Hurricanes at Doak Campbell Stadium, a long time sellout. And Bob Greasy, the whole world knows about the twice missed field goal, wide right, and all that stuff. But a lot's got to happen today before we get down to the place kicker. And it all starts with the quarterbacks. For Miami, Frank Costa is making his fifth start, has struggled. If he continues to struggle, we will see Ryan Collins. For Florida State, Charlie Ward has been on a roll, but it's Miami. And Miami is going to pressure him, is going to blitz him. Last year, they sacked him seven times. And Keith, you know, I feel that the, de the defenses are going to dominate this game. And the most dominating defensive player on the field is Derrick Brooks. And it could be low scoring we've hyped it as the game of the century maybe we ought to play it before we label it speed waiting at the miami end of the field to return the kickoff jonathan harris in number three and dexter siegler is number 34 they can both run the man who has been unwillingly center stage all this month scott bentley will kick it off He's supposed to break the string of failures at place kicking for Florida State against the Miami Hurricanes. We play on prescription turf at Dope Campbell Stadium, and the game is on. It's Harris. Jonathan Harris across the 30 to the 31. And Miami starts with pretty good field position as Frank Costa, a 6'4", 220-pound junior from South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, steps in. You see his numbers on the year. He had some rough spots along the way and was taken from the lineup. But he's back as a starter. Big people as targets for Costa's passes. Tellison and Jones are speedsters. Pucker is a big, big tight end. So from the 31, the first snap of the ball game is Donnell Bennett is the lone remaining back for Miami. They've gone to the one back. And Costa gives it to Bennett. And Bennett, who broke a big run out of traffic against Colorado, gets it up across the 35 for a five-yard pickup. The offensive front from Miami, and they've got to do a job today if they're going to be in this ball game. They're pretty good, and they're getting better. And Lumelski on the right side, number 77, may be the best of the bunch. At least he's been the one on the ride. Larry Jones is in the backfield for Miami. Four-man defensive front for Florida State. 
Dexter taking his time, testing the patience of Florida State. The pass is away, and the pass is completed to Larry Jones out of the backfield, and he's got a Miami first down at the 45-yard line. Defensively for Florida State, McIntosh, Nance, Alexander, Roberson, they're very good. Brooks is the ringleader. I mean, he's, he's becoming a scoring factor in Florida State's fortunes. <laughs> and Clifton Abraham at 5'9", a cornerback, the smallest of the bunch. Keep the 5'9", height in mind, because he's going to be checking some 6'4", wide receivers. Donnell Bennett is back in as the single back for the Canes. First down at the 45. Bennett again with the ball. Good block on the right side. Block on the corner. He's on the Florida State side of the field at the 44-yard line before Todd Rebo brings him down. Miami has come out and been able to run the ball uh, effectively the first two of the three first three plays. Number 10 is Derek Brooks. That's three plays in a row that he has had an opportunity to make a play and has not. The nerves at the beginning of the game are all on Florida State side. The kicker Bentley, not a good kickoff, and three plays, three successful plays for us for Miami over FSU. First down, 44 yard line. KC Jones, with a famous name for you. Costa second pass. Intended for 85, Chris T. Jones, and he was sealed away from the play. And the man that did the job, the shortest fella out there in the secondary, Clifton Abraham at 5'9". Keith, that may be a preliminary to something we'll see in a minute. That was a slant by the wide receiver on Abraham. Miami thinks that they can get a slant and up on Abraham because he's so aggressive. That just kind of sealed the fact that they're going to throw the ball at Abraham, throw that slant. Wouldn't be surprised to see a slant and up. And it's uh, several plays. Sprinkling of rain now. A little rain shower passing over. Hopefully that's all it is. A little one. We have seen some virtual floods on this field in the past. Bennett running well. Goes to the 40 on second down and 10. That's about a four-yard pickup. Miami has scored a touchdown on their opening drive in three of their four games. And uh, scoring first doesn't seem to mean all that much. Here's a look at Derrick Brooks. For 10 and inside linebacker. They'll move him around. It's a piece of the tackle on that one. Find the offensive line doing a nice job blocking against the defensive line of FSU. Third down and six. Tellison is back in. Chris T. Jones. Those are the two 6 4 wideouts. They're coming. The ball is thrown away. Out of bounds. Got to get it out. Frank Costa. So they laid their ears back and went after him on third and six. Defensive line of Florida State really gave him some, some problems. Problems in the offensive line picking it up. Mike Chrissy will try the punt. All you want here is a pooch kick. He's kicked five of 19 out inside the 20. And he got too much foot on this one, I think. It into the end zone, Florida State will have the ball first down at the own 20 when we come back. Here in Miami, his record against Florida State. Bobby Bowden's 18th year at Florida State. His home record, his record against, uh, I mean, he's a losing record against Miami, and the teams have beaten him twice. So, in other words, two of his three losses in all those years here at home have been to the Miami Hurricane. Let's take a look and see if Miami comes out and blitzes Charlie Ward, first play. He'll take the ball from under center. No, he won't. He'll go under shotgun. Oh, and go back to the two-back. I thought they probably would do this. This is the Bobby Bowden here. We come. Right here. Ends it off inside and nothing doing. Warren Sapp, who has to play, has to play well today, I think, for the Miami defense. He stopped Sean Jackson Kathump. Charlie Ward had 17 interceptions in 1992. He has won this year. Florida State is ranked number one in the country. Warwick Dunn is in the backfield now, replacing Jackson for the Seminoles, and they go back to the shotgun. The pass is away. The pass is completed. 
Marquez McCovey to the 30-yard line, and it's a first down for Florida State. So after a three-yard loss on a running play, they go to the gun, and bingo, first down. The offensive front so important to the success of Florida State because of the way they're playing the offense this year. Very young, but very good. Also tells you they're going to be pretty doggone good next year. Sean Jackson and William Floyd are back. Charlie Ward will put him in the two-back set. And on first down from the 31-yard line. No score, just in the opening moments of the ball game. Jackson bouncing outside. Keith, you mentioned in the opening, speed versus speed. And this time, the speed in the garden beat the speed in the white jerseys. C.J. Richardson, I think it was, tried to block him out. No, 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 you wrap him. You don't block him. And away he went. Take a look at the inside linebackers. That's Lewis, 52. He's a true freshman. Corwin Francis gets sucked inside. And then it's a foot race. Jackson is a big kid, 6'2 and 222 pounds. Kick off. Jonathan Harris at the 10 yard line. Out of bounds at the 25. That is the first rushing touchdown in the first quarter against Miami in 39 ball games. Ultimately, it comes down to blocking and tackling. The yakking and all of the pizzazz that comes down to blocking and tag. Sure does. It always comes down to blocking and tag. No matter how many fancy X's and O's you've got. Who was it? Bobby Bowden that said, you know, there, there's, there is some talking this week, but you can't intimidate Miami players, and Miami can't intimidate the FSU players. It just gets down to playing. Bennett is the single back. Costa gives it to him. He shows you a little muscle there himself, doesn't he? As he takes the ball off of the 30 for a hard five-yard pickup. Ken Alexander got a hold of him, but he just shook him off and kept on going. Well, what are we looking for here? Miami, inconsistent offense versus the number one scoring defense in the nation. The quarterback has been inconsistent. And FSU has three shutouts in five games for Florida State. Charlie Ward versus the Miami defensive pressure. They're going to put they're going to attack the receivers, and they're going to try to put pressure on Ward. Second down and five with Larry Jones in at the single back. Buster, good protection, completes his pass near the 40 to Dietrich Fossell, a tight end junior out of Gulfport, Mississippi. And the Canes pick up another first down. Well, the early read on Frank Costa is positive for Miami. He is on target with those receivers who have been open. As 
Brazil, the tight end, just gets in between the zones. And that's all he's going to get. He's a tough guy for a linebacker to handle. A quick 39-yard line. Put it. Bennett is back. Custer checks off, turns to Bennett to give him the number. Tough place to check off. Fumble the football. Ball kicked around, rolling around. Florida State may have it. They do. So Costa absorbed in getting the check off and changed the play. He and the center did not get together on the snap, and the ball was kicked around, and Richard Coast came up with it for Florida State. center and sometimes the center will try to start blocking before the snap gets all the way back. Costa never had complete control of it. And it's first down Florida State just inside the Miami 42 yard line. Jackson and Florida the backfield with Charlie Ward. Matt Fryer and Lonnie Johnson is your tight end. Number 81 is Kevin Knox. the timer to reset the clock either the game clock or the 25 second clock the referee is John Sophie it's a Big East crew Miami brought the officials as part of the contract deal they got nine 50 showing on the board and it hasn't changed. I guess they got him in sync. All right, here we go. Good field position for the Seminoles. Second possession of the ball game. Versman resulted in a 69-yard touchdown run by Joan Jackson. Charlie Ward back to throw it. Looks it fire, goes the other way for Kevin Knox. Incomplete. Defending on the play, Carlos Jones for Miami. Well, Miami said they're going to come out and go to challenge Charlie Ward. They're going to put pressure on the receivers. Take a look here, the outside linebackers. Both linebackers come. When you blitz, you put your defensive man one-on-one, -on -one, and this is what's going to happen right down here at the bottom. He sees the blitz. Ward reads it nicely. He's got man coverage in the secondary. This is just a nice, nice play by the defensive back. Second down and 10. Play came in from the sideline. Time to get it off. They just make it. Ford still got it. Goes underneath. Goes right through the hands of the intended receiver, tight end Lonnie Johnson. So it is third down and ten. And there's a penalty flag back at the 35-yard line. There's your DA offensive backs and receivers for uh, Florida State. Downfield. I didn't hear what he said. In ineligible downfield. Yeah. Okay. I think it was 66 tires. They're making Doak Campbell Stadium so big, they're still building things around. They're going to add more seats. They just added 12. The crowd today is 72,589. We just had a look at the reason why they're, why they're expanding it. That's Bobby Bowden. He is uh, doing some, some great stuff here at uh, FSU. Move the ball back to the 47-yard line. It'll be second down. And 15. Knox and Fryer, the wide receivers, change sides now. And the offensive set remains the same. Florida State out to a 7-0 lead. Being very deliberate about things. Jackson ran through the contact at the line of scrimmage, picked up about five yards from the 47 to the 42, and it'll be third down and 10. Warren Sapp, we told you a while ago, has to have a big day. He's got to be omnipresent in that defensive front because Brian and Patrick are going to be coming. We know that. you got to keep the hole in the middle closed. Ray Lewis, the true freshman at the middle linebacker position and the secondary people. Paul White is a relatively small man. But he, like number two Abraham of Florida State, plays very big. Sigler is the bell cow of the defensive secondary for Miami. Out of the gun on third down and ten. Charlie Ward goes.
goes to the sideline, and they're lucky to get that one back because number four, Paul White, stepped right in front of the receiver, Tamaric Vanover, and almost stole one. Keith, one of the new wrinkles that Miami is throwing at Charlie Ward is a three-man defensive line with a nickel, a spy. Take a look at the outside route. Good coverage right there. He reads the quarterback, reads the route. He's lucky that one wasn't picked off. If Ward hadn't had it outside, that could have been dangerous. Sean Liss has had uh, some narrow escapes with his punting and uh, has had one block this year and almost had that one blocked. Almost. But it goes into the end zone and Miami will come out to the 20. It was Kevin Patrick that flashed in front of the eyes of Sean Liss. Just missed. All on ABC Sports brought to you by American Honda, who's been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. And Delta Airlines, with 290 flights a week, nobody gives you more of Europe than Delta. And Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. And Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. 8.45 to go in the first quarter. Florida State leading 7-0 on a 69-yard run by Sean Jackson. Quite a remarkable run, actually. And that's where we are, with Miami now in its second possession. I'll make it its third possession. There's a little pass underneath, thrown to the running back, Donnell Bennett. Bennett getting some help out in front, turns in a big play, and goes all the way out to about the 43-yard line before Corey Sawyer can take him out of bounds. Miami moving the ball very consistently, getting some confidence for Frank Costa. Circle out of the backfield. The first down. Every completion builds the confidence. Dennis Erickson is concerned with, with his quarterback first. You don't have that problem on the other side. Now uh, knows that his quarterback's got confidence. And talent. First down from the 43. Costa gives the ball away to tailback. Larry Jones. And nothing there, maybe a yard. Now let's check in today with John Saunders. John? All right, Keith, we'll get back to Tallahassee in just a moment, but updating one game in the Big East between Rutgers and Boston College. Rutgers on the board as Bruce Presley goes in from 10 yards out, capping an 80-yard drive in 12 plays. David Gordon has just kicked a field goal for BC. That one right now is 7-3. to three. Meantime, Army and Temple right now, it's 14-7. Keith, let's go back to you. All right, John, 7 nothing here, and it is second down and still about 10 for Miami. That's a backward pass, but this time Bennett holds it. Florida State eats it up. Derek Brooks was the first man to get there. Nothing doing on that, baby. There's a loss of four yards. The previous time that Costa threw that ball to the side like that was also a backward pass, but that one went out of bounds. Backer was blitzing. It was uh, inside. It was Alexander. Brooks' man-to-man -man coverage gets over there very quickly. Both teams have speed. Both teams are going to be aggressive, attacking style defense. Third down and 13. Pressure coming. Steps up. Good move. Pass complete. Chris T. Jones. Big play. Inside the 20. Abraham who saved the touch. Both teams are very confident of their speed and their defensive. They want to be aggressive, but when you are aggressive, like you are right here, Sawyer on, on Jones, they think they can cover man to man and the pressure. Nobody's open that much, but if you get the ball in there, you can get some big gains, and that is a big gain. 41 yards and a big play for Miami. Put it right on the 20. First down for the Canes and Bennett checks into the backfield. Double wide bottom of the picture now. They gotta wait for the chain gang to catch up. Keith, when we talk about team speed, we mainly talk about it on defense, and that is with the linebackers, the defensive backs, and even the defensive line. And when you feel that confident of your defense, you do things to put pressure on the quarterback and single coverage with the guys in the second.
secondary, and both teams are doing that. And if you can block them and get somebody open just a little, there are some opportunities for some big plays. All right, we finally got the change in place. The ball is down on the 20. Miami owns it first down. Florida State leading 7-0, and this is the first real challenge of the game. Wimberley checks in to the bottom of the picture, number 88. He's a leaper. Costa gives it to Pinnock. Cuts it back. Big hole. Left side. Close to a 10-yard pickup. They'll take him down just short of the 10 and leave him a yard short of his first down. But the left side of the Miami line, Rudy Barber in particular, and Ricky Perry did a nice job for him. Yes, he did. Miami inside the 20 has scored 15 of the 18 times. They have been inside when Florida State gets backed up defensively. They're not going to sit there. They're going to recoil. They're going to come after you. So look for maybe a blitz here and some opportunities in the secondary. And it stays in. Second down and one. His big guys up front and takes it down near the five. It's first down and goal to go, Miami. Donnell Bennett, six carries and 40 yards in the game. Here's Bennett here. They're going to run right over here in this gap. Brooks is going to fill it and stick him, but this one, Bennett is going to win because he gets the yardage that he needs for the first down. That's just a nice job of running. Now they put in Derek Harris, first appearance for him. He comes in full on first down and goal at the five. He's in there to block. Yep. He's in there to carry the ball. <laughs> down to the two-yard line. I don't understand it, but I guess, it, uh, you know, why put a cold guy in on the first down and goal at the five? Well, uh, the, the book says when, when Derek Harris, when Harris is in there, he's in there to block for the other backs. And so FSU wasn't thinking it. They were thinking pass also. So nice uh, little change up. Well, he got uh, three yards on it. And second down and goal from the two. Harris stays in. Donnell Bennett comes back. Now he's in a blocking back formation. Give it to him again. Nope. Give it to Bennett. Bennett fumbles the football. Miami keeps it. Third down. Oh, Miami is lucky there. Whoa, are they ever? Taking a look at it from the other side. This play a little bit slow in developing. Left guard Barber, number 60, pulls. Abraham nice job that's the key to the whole thing he jams it up inside the ball pops out FSU is there first looks like Crockett is trying to recover it Erickson lucky on that one third down and goal it's now on the six Harris Chris T. Jones Tellison all wide to the right and out of the shotgun Costa he's got Harris It's the inside linebacker. That's 36, Ken Alexander. He's the middle linebacker. Miami knew the matchup they'd get. They saved the play for the right time, and they executed perfectly. Alexander tried to jam him, knock him down. Dane Pruitt, perfect this year in his extra points. Out of Chrissy's hold. Good. With 4.09 to play in the first quarter in Tallahassee. We're all even at seven. Elvira here, mistress of the dark and sometimes surfer babe, because Coors Light is the official beer of Halloween and the party's at the beach, Malibu Beach, where you can hang pins, look, Frankie and Annette, and of course, 
when it's time to chill, just reach for that cooler of Coors Light. Aged ice cold, never frozen stiff. It's the right beer now for Halloween. Just look for the Silver Bullet Smooth Display and dig up your friends now for a party at the beach. Happy Halloween, dudes. I just didn't want to face things. Yeah, I've been there. But now, my parents, they need real help. It's gonna be tight. We'll just have to manage somehow. I got this guy at Payne Weber. He put me in a mutual fund for my parents. Same time he set up my kid's college fund. That long ago? I didn't know about your parents back then. He asked. Dennis Erickson, Rich Olson, offensive coordinator, getting this matchup right here. This is the inside linebacker, uh, Alexander, Ken Alexander, trying to cover a wide. He's lined up at cornerback. Miami, in their, in their, uh, looking at the film, tapes throughout the week, saw that if they did this, got this matchup, they could take advantage of Bennett uh, versus a middle linebacker at cornerback, and they win the matchup. All right, we're ready for the kickoff with Scott Barnwell kicking to Tamaric Vanover and Warwick Dunn. Vanover is 80 and Dunn is 28. Remember, Vanover took one 94 yards against the Kings to start the game a year ago. He's got this one at the four-yard line. He's got a hole and then taken down by number 48 for Miami, Marcus Carey. In its sixth season, Honda Scholar Athlete Award brought to you by American Honda. Supporting amateur athletics, Derek Brooks, the junior outside linebacker from Florida State, is this week's recipient in communication. Honda presenting a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Florida State University. So put the ball at the 28-yard line, and uh, the coaching staff of Miami took a deep breath when Vanover suddenly popped through that <laughs> hole on the left side. Well, the question all week was, are you going to kick to Vanover? Well, and they have, and, and the they got away question. with it this time. Marquette Smith, the sophomore from Castleberry, Florida, carries the ball there, and there's a penalty flag thrown in the offensive backfield, just behind the offensive line. It's holding, it's on Florida State. Now let's check in with John Saunders. Keith, in the ACC, Wake Forest quarterback Rusty LaRue back to pass. Picked up by North Carolina's Sean Crocker. He goes 40 yards, and then watching when he gets inside the five, he just loses the handle. But Oscar Sturgis is there to pick it up and go in for the touchdown. All 10 Tar Heel points off turnovers. 10 nothing, Keith. Back here in Tallahassee, Florida, it's a 7-7 ball game with the Seminoles just being ding 10 yards for holding. And it'll bring up second down, first down and 20. 7-7 ball game. William Floyd and Warwick Dunn are in the backfield with Charlie Ward. They're the Garnet and Gold Seminoles. Double wide top of the picture. And Ward back has a look. Let's it go. And it is incomplete. Caught on the bounce. And now let's check in with one of my favorite people, a good friend, All-American All-Pro, Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. You know, one of the things you get into halfway through the season are a little tactics. Now, with so much of the offensive plays for FSU being called at the offensive line, so too are the line calls. So FSU's entire offensive line is now wearing visors. Why? So the defensive line can't get a read on where they're going by looking at their eyes. Good gracious. What's this game coming to? <laughs> Ward's pass had his man wide open. Pass is completed to Tamaric Vanover. And uh, that is back to the original line of scrimmage, uh, the 28-yard line. In case uh, Swanee looks a little skinny, he is. Of all things, he's training for a marathon. 
It's a good thing he came back over here with us older folks so we can take care of it. <laughs> you ran with him yesterday, didn't you? Sure I did. <laughs> you bet. To the elevator. <laughs> Out of the shotgun, third down and about <laughs> ten. Ward getting some pressure, getting more, gets it away. He's got fire. Number 76 in pursuit. Not oh, only Warren's going to catch him. Not only does he buy time, but he completes the pass and doesn't slow him up, so he can stay the margin away from the defensive back and run it in. I would guess, Bob, if Florida State could score 100 points, they would. Huh? I think they would like to score 100 points. They haven't played into the fourth quarter except one time this year in five games. I kick off. Bentley gives them room to return it. This is Jonathan Harris. And Harris has popped out of bounds short of the 20-yard line. So this time, the Seminoles get pretty good coverage on the kick and put him out of bounds at the 18-yard line. The Houston Oilers and the Buffalo Bills. A rematch of one of the greatest comebacks in NFL history. Remember that game they played a year ago? 35-3, oh, yeah. Houston leading. Buffalo came back to win, 41-38. That's on ABC's Monday Night Football. Next Monday at 9 Eastern and 6 Pacific. We got two quarterbacks that can light it up. I know uh, Warren Moon has been in a little bit of a slump, but he's too good to stay in a slump very long. Donnell Bennett is the single back for Miami. 14-7, Florida State has gone back to the lead here in the first quarter with 2.41 remaining. Costa throwing on first down. Let's it go, and Tellison slips and falls, and uh, there is no play for the team. Devin Bush, strong safety, defending Tellison on the play, and Tellison got kind of tangled up and fell down. Well, that was the opportunity. We talked about the slant route on the right side against Abraham earlier that he was all over. That was the effort to take, a, to take advantage of that. A little bit different coverage, and Tellison stumbled. So it'll be second down and 10. Second off again. Yeah. Last time he did this, he fumbled. And they be coming here. Here comes Brooks. Give it a minute. And Derek Alexander gets to him. A defensive end sliding in from the offense's left side was the first man to make contact at about the 19-20 yard. Alexander has been a big surprise. Uh, he has been relentless this year. They lost four defensive linemen to the draft last year. In fact, they lost four to the NFL, and two were in the and four. All four were in the top two rounds of the draft. 
But this defensive line has really come along this year. It is third down and nine. His first punt of the day was a 40-yarder. That is Corey Sawyer. You just looked at. And in red. Took an extra step trying to get more on the ball. He gets a good roll on it because he had a tail dragger and it will roll dead down around the 41 yard. So it is a 40-yarder. Two in a row. And tomorrow night, an invisible man will pose real problems in the metropolis. You can watch it. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, 8, 7 Central, ABC. 133 remaining first quarter. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan at Bill Campbell Stadium, Florida State University at Tallahassee. About 75 degrees. Had a little rain shower. Very comfortable day. picture on first down from the 41. Two back set. Here comes the reverse with Philip Riley and Riley out of bounds at about the 43. So Riley came sliding in, tried to reverse, got a little bit, not much. Here's John. Keith, next week you can see Ohio State here on ABC. This week they're facing Illinois. Bobby Hoying, 11 yards to Joey Galloway, his fifth touchdown reception of the year. The Buckeyes have scored on their first possession once again. Back to you. They look pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Second down and eight. may have started too soon. That 72 yard touchdown pass. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The wide man on the left side of the formation step back. Charlie Ward's longest completion of the season. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, I'm on the Miami side where I heard the defensive coach and the line coach talking to the players for Miami. They're telling the defensive line coach, don't worry about that last touchdown. Just put pressure on Charlie Ward. That's your responsibility. And to the secondary, don't worry about Charlie on the run. Don't come up and try and make the tackle. Stay flat. Stay back and guard the receivers. So the aggressiveness of the Miami defense has to be tempered with some discipline. Well, don't they have a spy on Ward? Bump? Occasionally. Shadow? Occasionally they are. They're going to a three-man line. In fact, they have a three-man line in there now. A number 15, Earl Little, is a spy. He's a defensive back. It's in the ballgame. Warwick Dunn checks in. Now the Seminoles have got four wide people plus the back out of the backfield. They give it to the back out of the backfield. Warwick Dunn and that same man throws the same penalty flag in the same place that we had a moment ago. So we apparently have another offensive infraction by Florida State. talking about here is Earl Little he's a defensive back he's in place of one of the defensive linemen they take one of the defensive linemen out of the game and bring Earl Little in now he's looking over here wherever Charlie Ward goes he'll shadow him that doesn't mean he can tackle him they just want to shadow him and make sure that he doesn't have free reign and run here's another penalty flag the ball is thrown complete to Vanover he's out of bounds up at the 45 yard line the offensive lineman can line up and their helmets must be even with the plane of the waist of the snapper or the center. So this, apparently somebody was lining up a little too far back. Offensive is not set. It's not set three times in a row. The first two were probably the offensive lineman's shoulders, Keith. The tackles in particular 
weren't square to the line of scrimmage as we see a comparison of the two quarterbacks so far. Your shoulders, the offensive lineman's shoulders, have to be square, especially the tackles, and that's the ones that normally get called for that. So what you've got, they're kind of lining up in a in a U shape. In a half moon shape. Yeah, half moon, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that succession of penalties totals five now on Florida State. It is second down and 28. The ball comes back to near the 28-yard line. And again, out of the shotgun with Charlie Ward. Dumps his foot, the ball comes back, and there's no pressure on him, and the pass is away to Vanover. There are three canes there, and they finally get him down at about the 43-yard line. And a bit of a ruckus breaks out. receiver and he is just the outlet there was a receiver running deeper but he's the outlet this kid you hear about his speed you check out the pushing and shoving no intimidation there but he is big he's 210 pounds third down and seven this is done the freshman from baton rouge first down florida state at the miami 30 yard line i mean this kid can really We've come to the end of the first quarter with Florida State leading 14 to 7. Look at that last play. Here is Charlie Ward right here. Everybody's going to be looking at him. Right next to him is Dunn. The snap is going to come to him. It's a little draw play without involving the quarterback. The line sets back. The trap uh, is there. Tire goes over. McNeil, 69, gets the block on the middle linebacker. A nice little play without the quarterback taking the snap. But the snap better be right. Oh, but that's why you practice that in, uh, all week. You don't practice it. If you don't snap it well, you don't run it. All right, they stay in the gun, and it's first down. Florida State at the Miami 30-yard line. Seminoles lead 14-7. We start the second quarter of play. The pass is zipped to Kevin Knox, and the pass is completed at the 21-yard line. <laughs> In the first quarter, thing that's impressive, 212 yards for Florida State. Miami with the one turnover. Florida State not much time of possession because their two touchdowns were long distance. Hand off Sean Jackson as one of the two touchdowns. Florida State going into that play was averaging 20 yards per play running. And 15 yards per play passing. Well, they That's haven't, why they got 212. <laughs> exactly. They haven't taken long to score. Long distance means 69-yard run by Jackson and a 72-yard pass to Fryer. Jackson getting the first down for the Seminoles and putting the ball at the Miami 17-yard line, and Warwick Dunn checks in the backfield. Charlie Ward is impressive. They got Dunn in there with him now. Hurricanes are watching a little back. But Ward seeing what they're doing to him. He looks to the center, sees where the safety's going, throws opposite. Talked about the pressure of Miami. There is not much pressure on Ward right now. And it off with Dunn. He's down at the two. Paris Harris, free safety, was the man that tripped him. And so it is second down and goal. Ziegler has come back now. Andy Bowden lets Brad Scott and Mark Rick call the plays. There's Ziegler back in.
the extra dimension that CW gives you. You cover everybody, you can't catch me, I can run it. Kicked by Bentley. Good. Oh, he's three for three today, having missed seven coming into the game. Number one, Florida State is out to a 21 to seven lead. Completed his last five passes for 119 yards and a touchdown. So he's entitled to a short nap. And the Seminoles will kick it off to Miami, leading 21 to 7 with 13-37 remaining in the first half. Jonathan Harris, number three. Jamie German, number seven, the deep people. Scott Bentley from Aurora, Colorado. I'm sure he's happy, just tickled to death to have his team up by two touchdowns. Kick is high, but again, not terribly deep to the five-yard line. This is German. 18-year-old freshman who is tracked down and brought down at the 19-yard line. And here's John. Keith, Boston College won at Syracuse. Rutgers doesn't seem impressed. Brian Forte in trouble. He lobs it off to Bruce Presley, who scores his second touchdown of the game, knocking off Eric Shorter's helmet. 14-3, Rutgers leads. Keith. Miami beat BC, however, in the opening game of the season, and uh, that put a big dent in BC's uh, Big East hopes. Losing to Northwestern didn't do anything for their uh, morale either. No. But they've come back. Yes, they have. Had a big win at Syracuse. So Miami uh, will go to work now after declination of an illegal procedure call. And uh, we'll start from the 19 yard line with Donnell Bennett, the single back. Trips to the bottom of the picture. They go with Bennett. About three yards out to the 22 on that carry. 72,589 is the capacity of Bill Campbell Stadium now, and I am sure there's at least that many and maybe more here today. This had to be the toughest ticket in the state of Florida in some time. Uh huh. James Stewart checks in now. The bigger back, 6'3, 235 pound sophomore from the home of the Dodgers. He's got the ball. And the Noles have him right about the line of scrimmage. Give him maybe one yard. Stewart started uh, to search a bit for a hole to run in. And neither one of these teams are going to give you any time to search. That's the ACC schedule. Florida State. ACC is Florida State's conference. Uh -huh. of Miami. Louisville and West Virginia playing today. That's a couple of unbeaten. Howard yeah. Schnellenberger doing a nice job, huh? Howard's, Howard's befuddled. He could go 11 and 0 and not really go anywhere. Uh -huh. Larry Jones goes out wide now. So it's the quarterback back there by himself and four wideouts for Miami. Throw that some of the last few years, haven't we? Steps away from the pressure, throws a hummer beyond the 30, and that ought to be good for a first down. It is. Move the chain. Chris T. Jones, a junior from West Palm Beach. Well, in our game summary, our game story, we said that uh, Miami needed some consistency at quarterback. They are certainly getting that. Costa has played very well, just being overshadowed by Charlie Ward. That pass picks up a first down. I guess a lot of quarterbacks this year have been overshadowed by Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
This is Donnell Bennett. It was that kind of a play that Sean Jackson ran and scored 69 yards on. But Bennett couldn't quite make that turn around the corner. But I tell you what, Donnell Bennett made me a fan with that run against Colorado when he disappeared into the stack yeah. over and then popped out and went 43 yards. Fourth and short, wasn't it? Yeah. He's a big back. Gain on the play was seven yards, second down and three. The ball rests at 38 of Miami wow. with no leading the game. Offensively, they're doing really what they wanted, Bennett. Running the ball well, Miami kind of possession on their side. The defense hasn't stopped them. They give it to Derek Harris, the blocking back, and Harris rumbled to the 48. He picked up 10 yards on that carry, and it's first down hurricane. So uh, Brooks, uh, Derek Brooks has been resting a bit. He helps us back on the field. This defense, Keith, has only given up two touchdowns in five games. They've had three shutouts, and one of those touchdowns came at the very end of the Duke game when they Duke had blocked the punt and took over on the one-yard line. Patrick McIntosh was also resting, and he's back. Now they spread out. Pressure comes from the backside, and that time Costa had his man, Jonathan Harris, and didn't hit him. And then took a pretty good lick because Alexander was coming after him. This is Derek Brooks. He has been a man child among men here. Touchdowns, he has three. Interceptions, two. He's run both of those interceptions back for a touchdown. One of the fumbles he recovered, he ran in for a touchdown. He has two sacks. He is, in fact, he has outscored 18 points to 14 or 12. All five of the opponents combined for FSU. Second down and 10. A little quick dump. I think Costa figured the defense was coming, and they were coming, but it was all linemen rushing, and so he tried to pop it quickly, figuring uh, the middle might open, but it didn't. The linebacker stayed at home, and the play didn't work. And the hot air balloon was floating around over the stadium. It's third down and ten now. Costa's got to do something here, otherwise they give up the ball. With Florida State leading 21 to 7. <laughs> Sideline pattern just beyond the marker. It'll be close. It's a first down. So Chris Jones comes up with the big catch. They got a lot of Jones boys on this Miami team. What, six of them? Seven, I think. Seven yeah. Three of them are starters on the offense, so you really have to uh, watch your initials, I guess. Mess huh? Messenger calling for Mr. Jones to get one over in that locker room. All right, Miami moving. Let's see if Florida State's going to do anything to stop it. Ken Alexander grabbing a hold of it. These are the games that follow us today. All three of those games are significant in their particular locale. Right after we get through here in Tallahassee. About California, huh? What a surprise they are. Incredible comeback last week. 31 to nothing. They're down and wind up winning it by. 42, 41. Second down and eight for the King. There's that play inside, completed to Jamie German, the freshman, and uh, they were, that can be developed into a wide receiver screen in the middle of the field, but it didn't turn out that way. He was just on a slant coming across, and they've given him just about the 35-yard line. They got to go to the 32. Third down passing, he's completed four of six. Our crowd today, incidentally, is a record crowd. I don't know whether I should tell him or not. Our chief might be over here. Maybe he's in the crowd. I'll bet he is. <laughs> Call it the 36-yard line, Donnell Bennett. 
it. Third down and three. He's Bennett's single back. Costa gives him the ball. Bingo. I mean, this big guy, when he gets his shoulder squared, his head down, and his leg driving, he's a load, and he's got a first down. Eight fifty-five to go in the first half of play. This is the twelfth play of this possession. First down, just inside the thirty-two. Costa almost fell down coming off the snap. Throws it away. Point, Pete. That kind of threw him off to begin with. So he got his foot, either somebody stepped on it or he got it tangled up with his guard. Yeah. Almost fell. Down. Costa playing well. Had a bad game last week against uh, Georgia Southern. Played well two weeks ago against Colorado, but really has been inconsistent and was replaced by Ryan Collins in the second half last week, but playing well here today. something else in mind and was just a millisecond away from taking it the other way. Abraham reads this all the way. Three-step drop is just a little hitch. Abraham is right there. He didn't know whether to go for the ball or whether it was a fake because he got there so quickly. And when he got there, he said, well, it really is a pass. He had second thoughts because yep. the timing was so bad. Jones, four catches, six to six yards. It's third down and seven now. For Miami, the ball is at the 28 of Florida State. Costa, another quick one, and that's not a first down. I mean, that, uh, heck, Donnell Bennett was falling down at the 25. He threw the ball three yards short of the marker. Well, that's what you get with inexperienced men like running backs, which Jones is, being out as a wide receiver. Now, he wasn't the primary receiver either. There was a man going deeper, and... Uh, the Jones uh, defender was dropping off, so he just hit the outlet. So it'll be a 42-yard field goal try for Dane Pruitt. And now whistle stop us. Florida State, it's our first time. Florida out. State will take a timeout with seven minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first half, trying to ice Pruitt. Actually, from Trustville, Alabama. Birmingham area. Only a sophomore. All the numbers. He's been very successful. 40 plus. This is 42 yards. And he missed it. That's his first miss of the year. They hit the cross. I mean, the upper. In it. He didn't get under it. Probably a kind of a driving kick. And it misses up. Didn't get under it. It's not spinning like he kicked under it. And let's see if it hits it. Yeah, sure it did. Hit it. Well, that's a miss wide left. So that's refreshing. <laughs> Is this serious? By the other team wide left. Yeah. <laughs> and here come the games now. First down from their 25-yard line as Warren will go to the gun and the fast break offense and it bounces and is almost picked off. But on the bounce by Sigler. Incomplete. Here's John. Keith, you know Heath Schuler of Tennessee has thrown for 17 touchdowns. This is his first on the ground against Arkansas' 7-0 lead. Meanwhile, Glenn Foley has an 11-yard touchdown pass to Clarence Cannon. Rutgers' lead is down to 14-10. Keith. Heath Schuler, huh? Hogs play the ball. It's tough. Yep. Schuler and Ward, the two top quarterbacks right now. Mississippi. 
and he has been uh, one of the favorite targets of Charlie Ward this year. Very good, tough second, third down receiver. Charlie looks to the sideline, gets a signal from Coach Eason, who signals in a play. So he's got a wristband. It's a numbered wristband. So the play is right there. He gets it out to the rest of them. There is the wristband has maybe 60, 70 plays on it. Third down and three. They got him this time. That's the first time, really, that he's been put on the seat of his britches, and Corwin Francis was the man who did most of the work. And seven, and it's fourth down. And seven guys coming at him. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the linebacker? 52 is Lewis. Number two is Marley. They're both linebackers. This is up your blocking, and still, Ward slides around. Just too many guys back there to get away from him. First sack of the day. Mike Chrissy for his third punt. The first two have traveled 40 yards each. No pressure and a little bit of kick this time. Got to turn over. And then runs Jonathan Harrison back to the 14. Did I say Chrissy? I meant Sean List. I'm sorry. Sean List, the water from Florida State. And it was a beauty. 53 yards on the punt. Two summers, two winters, two springs, two falls. All this, just $2.99 a month. The S Blazer two year lease. Why drive an imitation when you can drive the vehicle that originated the species? Chevy S Blazer. At the University of Alabama, we're proud to be college football's national champion. Gene Stallings, head coach, the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. We won because we worked hard and we were committed to success. Today's educators need the same qualities in the classroom. The Hitachi Promise of Tomorrow scholarships encourage students involved with college football programs to become teachers. This will make us all winners, because our future depends on education. Coming to the University of Miami was the smartest choice I ever made. I had the best teachers, and they really care about me. There's always something going on in my residential college. It's like my home away from home, where my professor and his family live, too. It really is a living and learning experience. My parents are really proud I chose the University of Miami, and so am I. A private university dedicated to excellence. The University of Miami. Put the ball on the 22-yard line. 21 to 7, Florida State leading. 6:05 to go. First quarter of uh, first half of play. Here's the second quarter. Bennett is the single back. Costa has gone all the way at quarterback for the Canes. Played pretty well. And here's Bennett. Over his own man as he tried to turn it up the field will pick up two or three yards as he gets it up around the 24 yard line. So look at the top 10 today. Miami number three obviously losing. Miami is the only team losing. Nebraska played Thursday and won. Penn State not playing. We'll have them next week. Well, you know, it's hard to believe Michigan and Penn State, the two teams next week, have never met. Second down and eight. Larry Jones comes out of the backfield. Costa's pass goes to it. He's hit by number 40 hard. I mean, Lonzo Horner just laid the leather on him, and he still bounced out and picked up another yard or so. The Chevrolet most valuable players chosen from each team at the conclusion of today's game 23rd year for the Chevy scholarship program a thousand dollars going to the general scholarship fund of each school ball is at the 28 yard line where it is third down and four. We've got trips to the bottom of the picture three wide outs and a running back Bennett at the top of the screen the quarterback is back there by himself. Batted down at the line of scrimmage and almost back into the hands of Frank Costa and the Canes will have to punt. Time is no pressure. 
pressure on Custer, but he was he wanted to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Well, he was trying to hit the wide receiver on a little slant. Only had a short yardage, a short way to go for the first down, but got it knocked down at the line. Now it's Chrissy. He likes to take that little extra step. Got away with it. Miami crowds the fair catch. 38-yard punt, but I think uh, Florida State's going to get a little penalty against Miami here and gain something out of it. And you've got a hurricane hurt down on the field at about the 43-yard line. It's Malcolm Pearson, number 38, a strong safety. for the injured player Pearson 427 to go first half has it taken Florida State long to score scored on a 69 yard run a 72 yard reception they've and had, they've got the ball again at the 41 yard line yeah they've had it five times and scored three touchdowns here they come after war they got him no they don't either he throws the ball he completes the pass and as the penalty flag thrown across the field. Two guys had a hold of him, uh, Marley and Lewis, and Ward threw the ball anyway and completed it. I don't That's care who the penalty's on, it's still a great play. Yep. Unbelievable. Well, legal procedure on the offense. of linemen jumping because the linebackers are in there blitzing. That's Ray Lewis. Marley number two. Look at this. Unbelievable. Miami said they're going to put pressure on Ward. They have put pressure on him. He has fought it off. This play was nullified because of the penalty, but I guarantee you it'll be on every highlight film uh, Florida State for sure. First down and 15, back at the 36-yard line. Again, Marley coming, but he's picked off, and the pass is completed. Knocked away from Kevin Knox, recovered by Miami. I want to tell you that you talk about a great play by Ward at uh, the uh, moment ago. That's an equally great play right there by Dexter Siegler. He knocks the ball loose and then recovers it. The first mistake for the Seminoles and the first key turnover for Miami. Charlie Ward just playing pitch and catch. Another blitz. Marley comes on the outside. Ward reads it, drops it off, and Siegler knocks it out of his hands. Siegler came in with seven interceptions for his career. Makes a big play for Miami. Miami has a break now. The ball is at the 38-yard line. James Stewart is in the backfield for the Canes. Costas checking off the crowd, roaring. Good luck. They're reading it. There's a lot of hooping and a hollering for a yard. But that's about what he got as he ran into John Nance, number 57. Then it comes back. And uh, Stewart leaves for Miami as the running back is coming up on three and a half minutes to play in the first half. And Florida State leading 21 to 7. It's not unusual for the Hurricanes to be behind, be behind in this series. They've been behind the last couple of years and pulled it out in the fourth quarter. chance with Tellison because number 18 had gone down the sidelines and was breaking free. Now let's go to John. Keith, you're watching probably the best quarterback in the nation in Charlie Ward. Here's another great one. Louisville's Jeff Brom. 15 yards. He zips it between defenders of West Virginia to Aaron Bailey and they lead 7-0. Still undefeated. Keith. All dressed up and no place to go. 21 to 7 the score. Miami, however, has run 40 plays and Florida State 21. 
Larry Jones is a single back. Gets single coverage down here to the bottom of the screen. He goes that way, and it's almost picked off by Clifton Abraham. Pass was intended for Chris T. Jones. What more can you want offensively than to have everybody out of the way, man-to-man -man coverage on a cornerback? You just have to beat the corner. Abraham just comes up and knocks the ball away. Abraham had to cover him deep, had to cover him to the post, and also covered the little hits they tried to throw. Abraham is 5'9", Jones is 6'4". Ball was a tad late. It is fourth down, so they'll have to, after the recovering the fumble, Siegler's great play. Haynes cannot profit from it. And you've got 310 to go in the first half. Yeah, well, if you've got a fake, this might be a, a, a nice place to try it. Although I'm sure that uh, Florida State is thinking the same thing. Well, they didn't have the 10 people on the field for the uh, punt. And so Miami spends the timeout with 310 to go in the first half. See that Miami has been full bore in the first half. Miami hadn't run into anybody like Florida State lately either. Florida State gives up on having a guy deep. They smell something cooking, but uh, not so. There's a high kick. Now, if they can get out there and cover it before uh, it takes a Florida State bounce and comes all the way back to the 19-yard line. So very little going just right for Miami right now in this ball game as the Noles lead 21 to 7. And they own the football first down at their own 17-yard line. Costa has played well. It's just that uh, Charlie Ward has played better. He's been consistent for Miami, but Charlie Ward handling the pressure that uh, Miami has thrown at him. Uh, the problem is when you play that style of game defensively, if Charlie beat you, he beat you for a big play, and that is what they have done. And then Miami has got him defensively a few times, but they've just forced him to punt. It's the worst starting point for the Seminoles today, just outside their 18-yard line. Changing the play. Once he got up and saw the defense, he wanted to change his play. He gives that ball to running back, Sean Jackson. He's had one big touchdown run already today of 69 yards, and Jackson will get it up across the 25. So they continue to get big yardage on first down plays as Jackson runs for almost seven right there. Your average averaging seven yards running on first down. You're in pretty good shape. Second down, three. Ward's pass down the middle. But 40, good. First down, Florida State, 41-yard line. First half has been that man right there, Charlie Ward. He's cool in the pocket. That man was covered very closely, threw the ball away from the defensive man, and picked up the first down. Pressure doesn't seem to bother Ward. And when he has time, he makes the big play. Two minutes coming up in the first half. C.J. Richardson diving in front. Of McCorby got his hands on it, but couldn't catch it. Incomplete. Charlie Ward is the point guard for the Florida State basketball team. 318 assists. As the quarterback for the Florida State football team, and coming into this game, 320 pass completions. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my life. Never. Defending him, and he won the match. Knox 
six three, two hundred, too strong for White, and he gets the first down out of it. Well, here they go again. They started just outside the 18. Now with 151 to play, they've got a first down at the Miami 39-yard line. Floyd is in with Dunn. Number 94, Dwayne Johnson finally gets a piece of the 7-0 quarterback. Johnson, 267-pound junior out of Bethlehem, PA, broke free. It's going to be a little twist, a little game from the other side of the field. 94 is going to go around. A little twist messes up the uh, blocking assignment. I'm surprised Charlie didn't see this. It only came from behind him. He's got eyes around all around his head, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him make some great moves from behind. Well, that's too late to change now. Covered up the ball, though. Doesn't that. get caught often. Nope. Florida State calls timeout. They've got one remaining with a minute and 38 seconds to play in the first half. Credential halftime report coming up with John Saunders. Got all the scores and all the gossip and all the news and all that stuff. And the live interview. The man who's guiding the team with the longest winning streak in the country, Beeb Stallings. Who? Beeps. Beeps? Gene Stallings, yes. I never did find out how many salmon he caught this year when he went to Alaska. Yeah, you can go by and help him. <laughs> 47 yard line. Second down and 18 for Florida State. They lead 21 to 7. Miami has had more snaps of the ball. Time of possession probably is on Miami's side. But the long strike has belonged to Florida State. Charlie Ward now is 11 of 16 in the ball game, 178 yards and a touchdown. And he's trying to put another one up before they go to the clubhouse. Pass to Vanover. Vanover will pick up about 10 yards on the play, maybe 12. Put him down into a circumstance where it'll be third down and about eight. The big change for Charlie Ward was when they went from from under center to the shotgun. Last year, he's won the last 10 games from this fast break style shotgun approach. Blitz is picked up. Ward's pass is away to the corner. Vanover's out of bounds. Incomplete. That stops your clock. He was covered for Paul White. 104 to play first half. Our crowd today, 77,813. That is a new Florida State University record football crowd. Sean Liss comes on to punt it as they fail to connect on the fourth down play, a uh, third down play. And on fourth down, Liss stands back at midfield and will punt a pooch it deep. Spins it toward the corner and that'll go into the end zone. And we've got 57 seconds left now for Miami try something from their own 20. What happened to the old knuckleball kicker? You know, lay it down and hit it off the middle of your foot. Let it wobble around, float around in the breeze, go about 25 or 35 yards. A lot of it. Down. Well, you, you would think that uh, they do practice this a lot in uh, practice. I'm talking to uh, Bowden. He was saying, you know, whatever whatever it takes on special teams is this week if it takes more time do it they work on that all the time and they just try to pooch it kickers get excited just like players do I guess so from the 20 here comes Miami now with 57 seconds and a couple of timeouts to work with and Costas pass to the sideline it's going to be good to Callison out of bounds pick up seven yards on the play and they get about six yards and now 51 seconds the thing here, if you're Frank Costa and the Hurricanes, the first thing you want to do is not make a mistake and turn it over. So you may seem being a little bit more cautious and careful. Obviously, you need to get out and score some points, but if you get something picked off here and run it back, the momentum changes, and you're, then you're down big time at halftime. Jones is in the backfield. Can 
take a chance. Penalty flag is thrown across the way by the linesman, and the ball is thrown into the crowd incomplete. And Derek Alexander, number 90, got caught in the neutral zone. That's the situation. Offside. That if Costa, the quarterback, knows you have him offsides and got a free play, then you can take a chance by throwing the ball downfield. That is the seventh penalty against Florida State in the first half. The last team to score 21 points in the first half against the Miami Hurricanes was California in 1990. The first down, Miami. Bowden taking notes. Saw something that happened. Wants to be reminded that he talks to his team about it at halftime. Maybe he didn't see something. Maybe he just thought of something. Something for his speech coming out the second half. tell from that. That's thrown away on second down and 10. So it'll be third down and 10 with 33 seconds remaining. So he's got to do something on this next play or give it up. Kind of interesting, Bob, that Bobby Bowden has not gone to the headset. I haven't seen him on the headset at all this first half. I think he's turned that or over to Brad Scott, the offensive uh, plays. You'll see him on the headsets every now and then, giving him ideas. Hey, what about this play we've talked about? Let's get that one the next time we've got the ball, that type of thing. Third and ten. There's a holding. They got away with it. Let's it go just as far as he could throw it. It is incomplete. Chris T. Jones double covered back down at the 23 yard line, and he threw that thing a little better than 50 yards. And so it's fourth down with 26 seconds to play in the first half. Ball game opened up. Bang, bang, bang. Now it's sort of quieted down. Miami has run 45 plays in the first half, and they trailed. 21 to 7. Pressure on the punt, but Chrissy got it out of there. And a fair catch is called back at the 31 yard line by Corey Sawyer. And Florida State has a couple of cracks at it. 30 yard punt, very high though, and no chance for a return. And those are the games that follow this one. And all of them very important. Michigan, state of Michigan battle, big in the Big Ten. Traditional Oklahoma, Texas, down where they make the best corny dogs in the world, the Texas State Fair. <laughs> and uh, Washington, <laughs> California, big at the back ten. <laughs> oh, they we had a few of those, huh? Back in my young days, I used to do that ball game and then take off and go do baseball playoffs. About midnight, you didn't know where you were. <laughs> 31 yard line now for Charlie Ward and company. Florida State with one timeout remaining. And this is going to kill the ball. Give it to William Floyd. And that gets your clock rolling, and I think that'll do it. Both teams head to the clubhouse. And at a halftime in Tallahassee, Florida State 21 and Miami 7. Now for halftime, here's John Saunders. All right, Keith. If you look, Miami, 45 plays. Offensively, you got to love that. You have it 15 more plays in FSU, but you're still trailing by 14. At the bottom, time of possession. Big in your favor. Uh, 303 yards total offense for FSU. That is a lot, and it comes from those big plays that FSU has made. The difference in the first half are the big plays that Florida State have had uh, against Miami defensively. 
As the two teams come back into the stadium for the second half, an interesting thing going on. Both field goal kickers are down there warming up. Both place kickers warming up. Well, that's optimistic. <laughs> I hope we need yeah. them. Yeah. I hope it comes down to them. <laughs> well, Pruitt at one end and Bentley at the other. Well, coming in, we thought it would be uh, for Miami, they needed some consistency on offense. They're going against a very good defense. And they've had that. They've almost gotten uh, half of the yardage that they normally get in the game. The problem is they've only got seven points. They normally average 27. Florida State, Charlie Ward versus that pressure defense. He's doing pretty well. 189 yards. He has a touchdown. He ran a touchdown in. No interceptions. And he's doing very good on second down. Now a moment with Len Swan. Keith. I talked to the assistant head coach, Greg Smith from Miami. He said offensively, they still want to operate on first down, either run or run play action, not to panic. They also want to come back in the second half, more inside running and maybe some draw. Defense was very simple. They want more pass pressure on Charlie Ward. I spoke to Bobby Bowden coming back, and he said what he was writing down that piece of paper in halftime was to remind his team that they haven't won the game yet. Keep in mind, the last three times they played Miami, Miami came back and beat them. He's going to stay with his game plan because he believes if they cut out the penalties and mistakes, they'll win this ball game. Well, he said yesterday when we were talking to him, and he didn't give a dang about who scored first because they've been scoring first every year, and Miami's been winning the game. Now, here comes Florida State for the opening kickoff of the second half. Warwick Dunn, the freshman from Baton Rouge, dancing around and comes out to about the 30-yard line. So it looks like it'll be pretty much the same group that played most of the first half offensively for Florida State. And obviously that includes number 17 at quarterback. Florida State offensively, we told you, Ward uh, is doing well. No interceptions. Jackson, 82 yards on a big run. And Vanover and Knox leading the receivers. Here's a look at the possessions. Three of the first four times they had the ball, they scored. Then they uh, fumbled one away and the halftime got them. They've had the ball seven times, really. Ward opens with uh, Jackson and Floyd behind him. That's exactly how they opened the ball game with this alignment. And the ball is given to Sean Jackson, number 35, and he's having a good day. He's got about five yards to the 35 before C.J. Richardson and Corwin Francis bring him down. Quarterbacks, uh, both of them playing pretty well. Costa 126 yards and a touchdown pass. And we told you about Charlie Ward. Marquette Smith comes into the lineup and Sean Jackson comes out now as they run that clock right on down. They lead 21 to 7. No reason to hurry. Just get it off before the clock clangs and save the penalty and they give it a Smith and not much for Marquette. In fact, he's going to lose a little bit. Kevin Patrick, not called his name very much. Once he almost blocked the punt, I haven't called Aaron Grind's name all day, but the two defensive ends for Miami do come upfield. They've fended them off so far today. They've been close, but, uh, but they haven't gotten to it. comes over late that's Francis 58 that's just an excellent throw Keith he had safeties on both sides deep and a linebacker kind of trailing him that is an excellent throw Ford back again look takes off Patrick penalty flag drop Saps after him and he goes out of bounds hard man to get a handle on Kez McCorby that's a penalty coming up probably against Florida State Kez McCorby came into the game with 28 catches. He has 32. He has four today for 62 yards. Face mask. No, it's against the defense. Somebody grabbed the face mask. Well, this should have been a sack right here. That's Patrick, 86. 
Charlie sees him coming at the last minute and then leans his body. Patrick gets the face mask, and that's the call. Charlie Ward, so quick, and if he sees you coming, he knows he instinctively and immediately what to do to make it the most difficult that he, can, that he possibly can for you to try and tackle. Well, the ball moves to the 34-yard line, where it's a first down for Florida State. Miami's 34. We're just starting the second half of play at a 21 to 7. Florida State lead. Sean Jackson now in the backfield with Ward. Miami looks like they want to come. They're picked off. Oh, here comes Krein, and the pass is away on the throne. As Krein came in, and he did get Ward down on the ground, but in the process, he also ran over his uh, buddy, Kevin Patrick, and Patrick gets up pretty slowly. Well, watch the linebackers. 52 is Lewis. He's coming. Corwin Francis at the bottom is 58. He's coming. Picked up pretty well. Krein gets loose at the end. Charlie couldn't get rid of the ball quickly because he had a longer route on, kind of an in and out route by the wide receiver and had nobody to dump the ball to any quicker. It was Corwin Francis who ran into Kevin Patrick to put him on. But he's all right. He's still in there. Second down. Ford pumps it, pulls it down. Takes a slide inside the 20, avoiding the punishment first down. time we've seen this and that is a a planned rollout Holly Bowden wants to get him outside right here watch the back come in and seal it Charlie Ward then will get outside the pocket look downfield but watch the block of the back right there seals him now he gets outside and says hey I've got some air some space let me get up field a little bit Miami blitzing picked up Ward's passes to the happened now Keith at halftime everybody went in all the people came down from the uh, press box all right this is what they're doing Miami is blitzing they're doing this you're picking it up very nicely continue to move on uh, Miami defensively has got to say hey, we're doing pretty good we just have given up a couple of big plays total offense all Charlie won second down three drop the ball the stack up to the 15. Let's go back and take a look at this fumble. You can see, see if we can see anything from behind the defense. And I can't see much. I don't know if he ever had it or not. I don't think a guard was pulling across, so I don't think a guard may have knocked it out of his hand. Second down and eight, and Larry Jones is in. throws it out to Jonathan Harris who is missed by one man and bolts across the 25 and out to the 27 and a first down for Miami. Jonathan Harris been pretty quiet today. That's a big play by Alexander the inside linebacker. If he doesn't come out and make that play Harris is going to run a long time. Harris broke two tackles on the way out there. Alexander just made a play. He saved at least 50 yards because if he doesn't make that tackle, Harris has really got some room to run. James Stewart is now in at running back. And has the ball. And has some yardage, about six yards. Oh. 
Take another look and see if we can see anything in that fumble that stopped Florida State on their drive. He just, he just never, never had it, did he? Never caught it. Yep. Never had it. It's Clay Shiver, the center. A lot of fumbles by Florida State this year. Not many of them at the center quarterback exchange, but most of them from ball carriers. Second down and three. And Larry Jones has a first down for the team. He has Stewart. Keith Stewart. 20, yeah, Stewart. 28. 28, yeah. Stewart. He had a big run against Colorado. He had a big day last week uh, against Georgia Southern, together, uh, gaining uh, over 100 yards rushing. First down Stewart stays in. Tellison and Christy Jones, those are the 6-4 wide receivers, both come to the bottom of the picture. Harris is the man closer to the ball. in the air. Same play as before, trying to get the ball to Harris. That time, Roberson, it looked like. Got his hand up. Here's Miami in the first half. Costa, pretty good, considering he was struggling coming in. Bennett with 13 for 55, and Chris Jones, the four receptions, and Bennett had the one touchdown reception. Miami had the ball eight times, had five punts, missed a field goal, and scored one touchdown. So, the 115 play drive was the best they had. Donnell Bennett. Single back. Has the ball. Lost a yard. Contract McIntosh was the first man to hit him. from behind Costa, maybe see what he's getting a look at. Oh, there's somebody. <laughs> if you didn't follow the ball and you kept your eye on the quarterback, there was somebody that just said hello to him. And it's fourth down. They'll have to punt it. The kick is away. Not a very long kick. Kind of high hanging. And fair caught by Florida State at the 32. Only a 25-yard punt. To look at the circumstances we have here 21 to 7 Florida State lead over Miami in the third quarter one of the reasons uh, Florida State's dominating the ball game is that Patrick Crine Sapp and Lopez the defensive front for Miami has a total of two tackles Crine and Lopez shut out so far He's down at the 31-yard line. Here's Lynch one. Well, Keith, Derek Brooks is on the sideline. You see he's in a little bit of pain. Last night, he came down with some kind of intestinal virus. He has not been able to keep food in his system, which means in a hot, humid day like that in a tense ball game, uh, he's not, he, he has to look at the possibility of dehydration. He sh in some cases, people think he shouldn't be in the game. But he wants to play. You see, they're putting ice on one knee just to make sure he doesn't cramp up too badly. He is very, very weak at this moment. It's a tough day. On second down and about 12, the pass is thrown to McCorvey, the leading receiver. And he's wrestled out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It's Van over. I can't see that. I see 80s and 88s. And when they're all wrapped up by white shirts, it's hard to tell which one it is. It's Van over. Rolling into the sideline. And the scheme defensively is the same for Miami. Pressure, try to get pressure. They have not been successful. But Charlie Ward finds the time and finds the open man. 
and continues to uh, complete passes. Look at Warwick Dunn now. He's in the backfield, so look out. True freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Gets it blocked down, and the pass is completed to Matt Pryor. On the right-hand side, and that's a first down. So Charlie Ward starts out just like the end of the first half. A little here and a lot there, and here's John. He's Louisville and West Virginia. Jake Kelcher on the bench for a moment as Darren Studstill is in there. He goes 80 yards to Nate Ryan. Kelchner is back in the game, but Louisville still leads 21-17. Keith. Good ball game. Yep. They stay in the fast break offense. Shotgun with Ward's pass away on, on the ball. He threw that very quickly. And Vanover could not come back to it. Charlie had to get away from it. They had to get rid of the ball. It's an interesting story about Charlie Ward, the fifth-year senior, and Warwick Dunn, the uh, little halfback, the true freshman we were talking about. Recruited in February. His mother passed away a week before his recruiting trip. Uh, Charlie Ward has kind of taken him under his wing. Fifth-year senior, Heisman Trophy candidate, rooming with a true freshman. So there's not much talk. They're both soft, quiet-spoken kids. And, not much talk going on in that room. Must be getting a lot of study in. Uh, yeah. The grades are pretty good. There's a fine catch. The ball was delivered quickly. Vanover just made it made it on the move. I mean, literally spinning as he made the catch. And all 17 of Ward's completion so far in this ball game have been to his wide receiver. Good point there, Keith. That's because of the style and what Miami is doing to him. They're giving you single coverage on the outside, and that's where his big play people are. He can throw to his backs or his tight end, but really, the, the uh, easy thing is to throw outside. Third down and seven. Here they all come. And they get him. They get him short of his first down. It's Rowan Marley making his first solid unassisted tackle of the day. He's been so close to work all day, yeah. he's got to be frustrated. There's nobody, there's no one man that can catch Charlie in the open field. There's just, he's just too quick. Sean Liss is in the punt now. 42, 53, and 36. This will be number four of the day. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection, and by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. From the 20, Miami's ball, Larry Jones is behind Frank Costa. Quick one to the side. Christy Jones picks up five yards on the catch, brought down by Corey Sawyer. The last four Miami possessions now have ended with punts. And the thing that's wandering through my mind, does this represent something of a slowdown? Or are we getting to the point where Dennis Erickson may choose to go to the other guy and try to jack him up? Well, I, I think Costa has played well, Keith, and I, I think he's very happy with the way he's played. But if things don't change, he may just put uh, uh, Collins in just because he played so well in the second half last week. Anything to change the pace yeah. of it. Second down, short five. This is Stewart. And he's got two, and we trip off to New York for John. Keep the Ohio State Buckeyes defense is swarming here. Fred Larson, the punter, he just gives it up as recovered by Terry Glenn. The special teams doing the job. 14 points off turnovers. Next week, if you see Michigan State and Ohio State here on ABC. Back to you. I think those Buckeyes are pretty good. Illinois has been their nemesis the last few years, too. They haven't uh, played well against Illinois. Third down, long two, Bennett. Single back. Jumps on the count. 
Bennett has the ball and slams across the 30. Looks like he'll have his first down. He does. Five forty-five to play in the third quarter. Say interesting call by Erickson. Uh, it's just mean was third down doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw it. Here's a look at the scores in the Southeastern Conference. Florida LSU tonight. Remember those Gators haven't lost either. That's right. They're ranked fifth in the country. Stewart, a single back for Miami. Huston throws it to the sideline. Pass complete to German, the freshman. 40-yard line and across to the 41. Bends on the mark. It's scuffling and struggling, but it looks like a first down. Sawyer wrestled him out of bounds. Michigan Penn State starts everything next Saturday. Some of you will be watching North Carolina, Georgia Tech, and ACC country. That'll be at noon Eastern time. And then those are the games in the afternoon. Big one in the SEC. Huge. Big one on the West Coast, even though Washington's not eligible, a loss to them counts. UCLA is in the hunt, even though they lost to California in the early going. This is Bennett finding some daylight, and he runs it to midfield. Now the Canes start working themselves out where they look like they might generate some kind of a threat here. The plan now offensively for Miami is working. That is, keep the ball away from Florida State. They work on the short passing game. Bennett is running nicely. They're picking up first downs. It's just that they've had such a long way to go each time they got the ball that something happens along the way. They have to give the ball up. Eric Brooks is back in the ball game. It's a very good Florida State defense as we showed you with the graphic. Eric Harris is back on the field trying for his first down. He's close. Bennett with 17 carries for 68 yards in the game and Brooks who's been primarily a blocking back 240 pound sophomore scared it several times today and quite well thank you they will measure at 356 to go in the third quarter and Florida State is leading 21 to 7 no scoring here in the second half as yet and Derek Brooks is again leaving the field. He just, just sapped, yep. probably. Well, there was some flu going, or flu-like symptoms, as you notice, it's short by about a foot. Flu-like symptoms going around Florida State. Uh, Bentley, the kicker, had some symptoms of it. It's a big play right here, Keith, because if you don't make it, you're Dennis Erickson, what do you do? Do you go for it then on fourth or possibly turn the ball over? a yard and they didn't need more than a foot. So it's first down Miami at the Florida State 48 yard line. Florida State having lost on those dramatic place kicks that arrived. Tough, tough ball game. The nominated basically by Miami. Come out here with this brand new offense and Built to the talents of Charlie Ward and have dominated this game, controlled it, I should say. Maybe not dominated because Miami is seemingly on their way back into the contest. There's a little play action, freezes everybody, and Dietrich Clausel, the tight end, gets on down the field and has what appears to be another first down. It's a nice play there. First time they used play action away from that one back and went back to the tight end. to see the fake go over this way. Clausell is here and he's going to go out and after he fakes he's going to come back out and hit the tight end. Watch as the defense goes over to the left. They're fooled. Costa stays away from the defensive man. Roberson that's free. Nice play. No question they missed Derek Brooks in the lineup because he's back on the field. He hustled back as soon as he could. There's that little pass. 
Finally got it out there to Harris, but didn't work for much. Harris is out there all by himself, and uh, they just buried him. Here's John again. Keith, Bob Greasy mentioned that uh, Tennessee quarterback Heath Schuler is probably 1-2 with Charlie Ward. Here he goes 11 yards to Craig Faulkner. His 18th touchdown pass of the season that ties a volunteer record set by Dewey Warren back in 1966. Keith. The Swoopran. That kid can play. He and Charlie Ward, I'd take them both. <laughs> then you could get you could pick second down 11 the ball is back at the 36 for Miami and he's had that man open over there all day long some have worked and some haven't that's caught by Christy Jones and he's a yard short of the first down as uh, Mac Knight wrestles him down so this game if Miami crunches it on down the field and gets in the end zone oh my goodness coming up on the fourth quarter we got a minute 30 to play Eric no uh, Erickson knows that this is what he needs to do too because he needs to keep the ball away from Florida State and at the same time keep the drives going to get him down the score That's the first down. First and 10 Miami at the Florida State 20. One thing I don't think uh, Bobby Bowden will do this time, he ain't going to play it close to the vest. But these guys, they yeah, don't know about them. Martin Short and Nick Nolte, it's a comedy that never runs out of steam. Three fugitives on the Saturday night movie. And then Mike Connors, guest stars as the top new cop on commission. Tonight on ABC. From the 20 now. for the ball. Big hole left side. Big gain inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line and it'll be first and goal to go Miami. So it looks like the Canes had a meeting and said, hey, it's gut check time, guys. Let's see what we can do. Right here and check the line as they come off block and, and the block here, he's going to start over here and work all the way back to the left side. Good blocking by the offensive lineman. Middle linebacker gets over to the right. Jones, number 63, takes him that way. Look out for the blitz inside of 10. Put it on the nine-yard line. Bennett's back in. Costa gives it to him, and he goes right up the pipe to the six. Pick up a three yards. <laughs> Well, there's one thing for sure after what's happened in recent times. Uh, Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles ain't got no more feet to shoot. They've taken care of both of them. <laughs> so it's, it's 21 to 7, and we're winding down to the end of the third quarter. So we'll be back with the final stanza after this message and the word from our ABC station. sorts of specters and shadows that can flicker through your mind and including this one if you wear the garnet and gold I don't think you have to remind Bobby Bowden of that fact either no this is the 14th play of this possession Ken Alexander is not in there he was taken out with back cramps they're trying to replace him and move it into a goal line defense circumstance with second down and uh, six. Second down and goal from the six. Bennett is the deep back for Miami. 21 to seven as we go to the fourth quarter and Bennett bounces outside and he's taken at the five and it's Clifton Abraham one more time. Boy, is he tough. He is tough. He is a nice play. He's a corner, only 5'9". Great man-to-man -man coverage. But he comes up on the uh, outside and fills the run. Couldn't ask for better work from a corner. Cover your man, man-to-man, -man, and also come up and force the run. So the ball stays at the six. And it's third down and goal. Was 
headed for the corner, and Costa didn't put enough air onto the ball. Well, they had Bennett, the, wide re the running back, out at wide receiver, and they crossed this time. And this time, the inside defensive back, Bush, saw it and knocked it away. If Costa could have held it a fraction longer, Clausell probably would have been wide open. If this is 23-yard field goal try. By Pruitt, is good. So we've got 14.07 to play in the ball game, and it's now 21-10. Again, huh, Frank? I don't say this to many people. But what we do, the job we do. Okay, guys, listen up. It's the most important job I can Tony, think of. You've got a flight control check. Lewis and Randall. I mean, there's no such two? thing as a B plus mechanic on this airline. Let's do it. Let's go. Everybody knows their job. Everybody's responsible. Anybody, right down to the most junior mechanic can keep an airplane in this hangar if there's the slightest hint of a problem. You might think, doing a job like this, day in, day out, it'd become routine. You know, just turning wrenches. But every now and then, I just go up and take a walk through the terminal. And right there, right in front of you, you see what's important. Tony and Diane get regular insurance checkups, just like they get regular medical checkups. I'm State Farm Agent Carlos Bermudez. I have been their State Farm Agent seven years. A family insurance checkup helps them make sure all their coverages are up to date. It's also a good time to explore options, like how their life insurance plan can be adapted to help with their daughter's college education. I think the family insurance checkup is something everybody can feel good about. Kind of interesting, both teams over 300 total yards gained after three quarters of play. Yep, Miami, time of possession, big advantage, plus, plus 12 minutes, and the total number of plays, total number of plays plus 22 plays after three quarters for Miami. Scott Barnwell will kick it off now for Miami, and Van Over and Dunn are the deep people. of a different feel about it right now. Have well, that it's electric. kind of in flux before yep. Florida State was in control. Ball bouncing on the ground. Fryer picks it up, pitches it back. Gives it back to Dunn, who is the running back. And Dunn, frustrated because he didn't get more out of it. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, going into the fourth quarter, physical conditioning becomes a critical issue. So far on the Miami side, they're holding up very well. Nobody's had any problem. But on the Florida State side, several players are cramping up very badly. Tire on the offensive line, and of course, Kid Alexander having tremendous problems with cramps, and they're going to see limited action throughout this ballgame. Could have meaning. Yep. First down, just short of the 35 for the Seminoles. team in the country leading 21-10 over the number three team in the country. Charlie Ward by his time and slides down at the 45. He slipped past the marker. He's got a first down. Just so long as that man right there doesn't get cramps, Florida State will be in, uh, in high cut. It'll be all right. people. Charlie Ward looking to the sideline for his play. They have run the clock very well today. They've milked that thing right down to the nub several times. Sean Jackson and William Floyd are in the backfield with Charlie Ward out of the gun. Give it to Floyd. One of the few times that William has been able to carry the ball. And he's going to pick up about seven yards on the carry and be delighted with it. Yeah, hey, William. Here's John. Keith, Wisconsin having a terrific year. Tough to stop them on the ground. Brent Moss has a touchdown run, and now Terrell Fletcher 
just about unmolested against Northwestern. 14-0 is the score there. Keith. William Floyd got so excited about that. He said, that's what that football looks like. Well, he is he is the inspirational leader of that uh, club. He doesn't get to play a lot because he's the man that goes out when the third wide receiver comes in. But uh, nice play calling by Brad Scott to get him the ball. Lewis Tyre has come off the field and John Donaldson has replaced him. So there's another uh, Seminole that's having some trouble apparently with humidity. Ball start, lineman move before the snap. And a five yard penalty tacked onto that at 1240 to play in the game. So the Seminoles right now are just a little bit out of sync. What they had hoped to do, Florida State, is to wear down that defensive line of Miami, where in the fourth quarter they would tire. I'm talking about Patrick and Krein and Sapp. But uh, they've rotated their defensive line, and uh, it's the offensive line of Florida State that's beginning to feel the, uh, the heat. the blitz picked off pass whistle into the arms of Kez McCovey and the first down for Florida State at the Miami 38 yard line. Oh, I tell you that McCovey is a magician. Well nothing's changed linebackers are still blitzing right here giving man to man coverage right here. He just got a hook. Charlie's going to get him the ball. He's got all that room in the middle. Look at the room right in the middle. He's got man to man and nobody helping him. You break that tackle, it's see you later. But he's hooked there and been open virtually all day, hasn't he? Well, it's either that or play zone, play soft, and they get let Charlie pick you apart that way. And they've chosen the aggressive style to try and put pressure on him and the receiver. And Florida State takes the timeout. Pass it around, keep them all happy. Huh? Well, we're talking about Charlie Ward. You see his numbers a lot. This is who he's throwing to, all wide receivers. Manover with seven, McCorvey, Knox, and Fryer with that big one early in the game for the touchdown. That's who he's throwing to. First down, just inside the 39. flag thrown. I think he got a holding call coming up here as Darren Kryan was celebrating because he was tangled up with big Forrest Connolly and I think Forrest was holding him. So while they marked that off, let us have a look and a listen to Lynn Swan. Kate, you and Bob were talking about the Charlie Ward work done combination. I'm with Doug Williams and one of the people responsible for putting those two together. Why'd you do that, Doug? Well, number one, when a tragic accident happened with uh, Warwick early um, part of the year, you know, I've been knowing Warwick for a long time, knew his mother, and I tried to stay away from him, but I had an opportunity to meet Charlie last year, and we became pretty good friends. When I found out that Warwick was coming to Florida State, I asked Charlie to do me a favor, and that was to take care of Warwick Dunn. And uh, one night he called me out the clear blue and said, why don't you ask Warwick, do you want a room with me? So I called Warwick and gave Warwick the phone number, and here it is. Charlie decides to go pro. Will it be football or basketball? Sitting here watching you, hopefully play football, because uh, I think he can make some things happen. All right, thank you, Doc. Mm -mm. Not enough money. <laughs> not enough money. Now, one of their playing basketball players now, he'd be crazy not to go basketball. He could be a, surely be a first rounder. There are teams, I'm sure, that would just leap out of their shoes to get their hands on him. Sean Jackson making that catch. I mean, you got guys getting $84 million, $60 million. Are you kidding me? Phew. And they don't even, uh, I mean, your chances of surviving 10 years in basketball are pretty good. Some say he might be the top point guard in college basketball. That's Charlie what the Warren. heat's doing to people right there. You see at number 52, it just Ray Lewis is just sapped by the heat. Second down after the penalty, it was a 16-yard penalty, actually, and now it's second down and 22, and Ward turns, throws back, they're trying to set up the screen, and Warwick Dunn has the ball, and they didn't get much out of the play. Coming in to make a heck of a play on it, He's number 86, Kevin Patrick. Warwick Dunn is an exciting freshman player. We've been talking about him. He was a quarterback in high school down in Louisiana and came in here. They didn't know, they knew he wasn't going to play quarterback. They didn't know whether he's going to be a running back or a defensive back. The injury to Tiger McMillan uh, of the Seminoles earlier in training camp, if, if Tiger hadn't have been injured, we may have seen Dunn playing defensive back and not offensive back. And Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator, says, I'm sure glad that uh, we've got him on our side. <laughs> yeah. 
lost some drills there. Oh, yes. Harley shows blitz. Now backs off. Ward hands the ball inside. And it doesn't work for much. It's done. Carries. And 86 is Patrick. And Earl Little is also there. Crowd, the little few current. crowds of uh, booing, uh, thinking that Bobby may have been conservative a little bit. You've got nine and a half minutes to go. Jonathan Harris will go back now for Miami, and here's the puck coming from Sean Liss. Low line drive, and Harris is going to take it at the six. A lot of red shirts looking at him. He got a little help, though, and comes back to the 14. He got a flag down. Late flag. 44-yard punt, an eight-yard return. Let's see about the penalty. seconds to play in the ball game. It's 21 to 10. Florida State leading Miami. Miami's ball first down and it's 28 after that personal foul call against the Seminole. Costas changing his play. Bennett. Bennett runs into Devin Bush and is taken down for uh, I don't think any gain at all. Right here, let's pause five seconds so our ABC stations across the country can tell you who they are. This is WFTB, Channel 9, Orlando. Florida State scored first. Miami came back to tie at seven. Then a couple of touchdowns, big plays. And Charlie Ward scoring the third touchdown. We've had no scoring in the second half. James, uh, except for the field goal by uh, Miami. James Stewart is the deep back now for the game. He's blocking, and the pass by Costa is thrown under pressure. And the man pounding on him was uh, back, uh, number 86, the guy who had a piece of him, I think it was. Tyrant uh, Marion, there he is. Games coming up next here on ABC as soon as our ball game is done. Three big games as far as the regional interest and impact, except in the case of Oklahoma, Texas. That's just big period because of history. Doesn't involve either of their conferences. Kid Miller at Michigan State's doing a nice job. He is. Quarterback. Donnell Bennett now is the single back. 26 yard line and it's third down and 12. Key play here. Let's it go and it is out of bounds, incomplete. Pass caught by Jamie Drummond, but thrown out of bounds by Costa. And it's punting time for Miami. Now, time is very precious at 8 minutes and 25 seconds to play. And uh, Mike Chrissy comes off the punt for the seventh time in the ball game. Corey Sawyer waiting for it. Junior out of Key West. Got some pressure on it. That was close. And Sawyer comes up to make a fair catch at the 45-yard line. Only a 29-yard punt under the pressure, and it was Clifton Abraham. Almost got a piece of it. A top 10 AP. Alabama is off. Miami losing. Ohio State now up only 17-12. Up. Florida State leading 21 10, 8 17 to play in the ball game as the clock starts to roll and snap to Ward. And Ward looks around and lets it go, and the pass is completed just beyond the marker. And the attitude here, Keith, if you're all wave it off, and they're not going to give it to him. As McCorby went down to get it, and an official upfield who was looking right into his arm says, No, you didn't touch it. Well, let's take a look. Good protection, huge hole to throw through. Looked like he caught it. But the attitude offensively is, if we score here, the game is over with. And what they're thinking is, in the second half, Florida State offensively have had the ball three times and hasn't done anything with it. They fumbled it away and two punts, so they're due. Catch won't stand up. And it's got some animated 
conversation uh, stirred up along the side Florida State sideline but it's still second down and ten. Sean Jackson and William Floyd back there with Charlie Ward. Here they come. Incomplete. And Ward drilled it again to McCovey and this time there was pretty good coverage by C.J. Richardson and he couldn't reel it in. Well again if they make connections this one on one and you break the tackle and you've got some big plays. Second half, Miami has been uh, the winner, obviously, on that strategy. They've, they've used that strategy the whole ball game. Eight minutes coming up to play in the game. Snap it to Warwick Dunn. They've tried this before and it worked. This time it's going to work. undefeated but really no competition until today they face Kansas but they're off to a good start Chad made 19 yards to Andre Coleman and they lead 10 to 3 looking to go to 5 and 0 and 1 and 0 in the big eight Keith. the purple and white having a big season you ever been to Manhattan Kansas Buck? no all right lad if you ever go put rocks in your bucket the wind can blow <laughs> On the Great Plains. Second down and ten. I've been to Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sean Jackson trying to move this pile, and he does for about a yard. But all of this shenanigan going on here, Florida State sitting on an 11 point lead, and they're just chewing up the clock. Second down and ten coming up. Tomorrow night on ABC, Joanna Kearns and Tim Matheson will star in the world premiere movie Shameful Secrets. The Sunday night movie tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central on ABC. Charlie Ward is 20 of 31, 261 yards, one touchdown pass, and a touchdown on the ground when he ran in. Lewis Tyre is back in there at the guard position, too. That'll help him a little bit. They're blitzing, and he's checking off. Play on him and drop straight back under center and a whistle. Too much time. I think somebody called timeout. Before the snap, the offensive team called a timeout. I think that's exactly timeout what happened. Florida State. I think in the signaling that Charlie Ward was signaling with crossed wrist, right? Yeah, but I think it's Jackson. Yeah, you see the play clock three. The tailback, the tailback yeah, on Jackson the left side. Yeah. yeah. It was Jackson. Yeah. Charlie was busy, so Jackson took over and helped his quarterback. Good thinking. Stadium today, 77,813. That is a Florida State record. Yes, it's over the capacity, but big deal. Give you some idea of the quality of this ball game. 52 players who suited up for the 1987 game reached the National Football League. That gives you some idea. And the quality is right in front of us again today. Young. Give them time. Wait till they grow up. Wait till they start shaving. It was a smart call on the, on the, on the part of uh, Sean Jackson to get that time out. Third down and nine now. Jackson falling down. Not a particularly well-thrown ball by Charlie Ward. 
yard. And uh, Jackson falls down, losing yardage, and Florida State will have to punt. So now the time remaining is 6.15. The clock is running. It's 21 to 10, Florida State. Miami's Jonathan Harris waits for it. Liss has had one block this year. Let's see what Miami can they get the help. Not really any pressure. White came around the corner, but not much there. Harris waits for it, steps away from it, and the ball bounces back upfield, and it's on the 23-yard line where Miami will have possession first down. And if time permits, we'll have the thrifty car rental post-game report for you with scores and highlights. Between games, we've got three more games to follow the second half of our doubleheader and some big ball game. Good coming up. Put it down on the 23-yard line. Donnell Bennett will be in the backfield. Talked about the game story for Miami. Inconsistent offense against the, uh, the number one defense in the nation point-wise. Costa has played well. I wonder if uh, Erickson has thought about changing and putting Collins in. A little bit more mobility. Maybe get him outside the pocket some. Costa 19 of 37 for 177 yards. That's thrown over the middle. Chris T. Jones brings it down. And the tackle by number 57, John Nance, who dropped off from the nose tackle position. Somehow he got there back there and made the hit. John Nance, the uh, nose tackle, was not expected to play. or hurt his ankle last week. He's had a tough year. He had a benign tumor removed from his shoulder, missed spring practice, and he made it back and has played a heck of a game at the nose. Chris T. Jones, seven catches for 86 yards in the game. It's second down and five. Costas' pass is thrown over the arms of Jamie German. He just wasn't long enough to catch it and stay in bounds. So it is third and five. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm saying here, listening to what you're saying about the quarterback. And, you know, you're dealing with egos and psyches and all of this thing here. But the defensive players on both sides are tired. Very tired. Fresh legs would mean a lot. Now, they put Brooks and Alexander back in there. Both of them are sick kids and uh, worn out. I mean, as far as changing quarterbacks. Yes, but uh, fresh legs might mean a lot. Yeah, but, but how long would it take him to feel comfortable in the game? I have no idea. There's a pass intercepted by Devin Bush. And the game is over. Florida State's probably going to get hit with a penalty here for so much, too much celebrating. But that ball was underthrown. Devin Bush read it all the way and scattered into the end zone. Celebrating is bound to bring a penalty. That is the sixth defense has scored this year for Florida State and they've only allowed three unsportsmanlike conduct too many players on the field the penalty will be discussed for the kickoff yeah that's not really unsportsmanlike conduct uh, too much celebration is the more specific but in the vernacular of the rules it uh, falls in that category <laughs> Here is Scott Bentley with the score about to go if he makes this 28 to 10. And he makes it. And he is the happiest young man in the state of Florida, Colorado, Alabama, North Dakota, Maine, New York, not to mention Illinois, Texas, and Arizona. He said, hey, look pressure. Look pressure. Ain't no heat on his back today. 
may be a day of reckoning yet to come. Miami puts three wide receivers over here, and one of them is going to break into the inside of the field. The man that sees it all right here is Devin Bush, and watch as he's going to sneak over and just size up the throw, and as it comes, sizes it up, sees it all the way. The other safety almost picked it off. That's cold. He could have picked it, but Bush says, leave it for me. I'm headed for a touchdown. The last time Miami lost a road game was October 20, 1990, when they lost at Notre Dame, 29 to 20. It was Alexander, 36, who did a nice job of redirecting. That's a polite way to put it. He jammed the receiver, knocked him off his route. He was just back in the game, was uh, Alexander. Good, tough defense. That's Mickey, Mickey Andrews right there, the defensive coordinator. What a delightful man he is to chat with. He lost a lot of good people. Marvin Jones, he lost those linemen, Freeman and Simpson and Palmer and Footman. All came off that, all in the NFL now, and he has rebuilt that defensive line. Two streaks, one's headed south and the other's continuing to grow. They will kick it off from the 20-yard line. It should give Miami a fairly good field position. But it's 28 to 10 now. That's a pretty good size hill. Well, look at this. He hasn't kicked the ball that far all day. You don't think Bentley is injected up? <laughs> well, you know he should. I'm happy for him because he's taken a lot of heat He's an outstanding kicker. Wait until they come up to the point where they need three to win, and then it'll be all over again. You know? The way this country is. Well, I think well, you're right, but I think at least they're putting this to rest. Yep. The Miami Florida State wide right. Costa throws under. Pellison, first down. Get to the cross, the 30 to the 31. There are some days of reckoning. This is only the first of three possible games of the century if you want to keep using that phrase that's been beaten to death this week. But uh, look at those two games in yellow there. Now, accepting the fact that uh, they could get in trouble right there against Virginia. But Notre Dame that pass is high out of bounds. South Bend, Indiana November 13th. Old red. Pretty good football team lives up there too. Yep. Then you go down to Gainesville, Florida after Thanksgiving. Ain't a bad team down there either. Yep. So uh, this is not the end of the games of the century for Florida State by any means. Came in unsettled. The quarterback situation. Ryan Collins, who had played well in the second half last week. You know, it, you can second guess Dennis Erickson. Costa has played well. He has not produced points since since the, since the first quarter. Derek Brooks almost had another touchdown right there. There's a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of teams that have not scored against Florida State, so he's, he's not playing a team that's, that doesn't have a good defense. He has not made a big mistake until that last play, and now I think Dennis feels like to put Collins in right now, you know, wouldn't do any good, but that's his call. He, he yep. knows his people. He likes Costa. He has said that he thinks that Costa is going to be his quarterback, and he did play well today, but he'll be second guess because uh, well, Ryan Collins did last week and didn't play today. Well, I think he made the right choice. Coach, coach gets up in the morning and uh, he puts on brown socks instead of blue to start second guessing. That pass down the middle is thrown very hard and off the hands of Christy Jones. And there's a penalty flag thrown back around where Costa let the ball go. And it's going to be a call against the Miami Hurricanes. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Jack O'Hara, coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich, who also produced today's game, directed by Drew Essikoff. Here's the call. Holding on Miami, declined by Florida State.
State. Our technical director, Gary Larkins, associate producer of college football, Jim Ressler, associate director, Dick Buffington, our production manager, Lynn Cadden, tech ops manager, Al Fong, and Jerry Reuter, assistant producer, Doug Johnson, Brian Gordon, our statistician, Dave Bernson, our spotter, Todd Barry, computer, Mark Demento, and sideline coordinator, Mel Hundley. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, and the ball is pointed away by Miami's Mike Chrissy. Nobody back for Florida State. They let the ball roll, and it'll roll dead at about the 19-yard line. CFA College Football on ABC Sports has been brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the new Chevy cars for 1994. And American Airlines, something special in the air. And Hewlett-Packard Desk Jet and Laser Jet Printers. And cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the cold. Get into the cold. Been a very pleasant day in Tallahassee, Florida, and a most happy day for the Florida State Seminole, ranked number one in the country since the very first balloting was done back in summertime. They lead 28 to 10. They have it first down at their own 19 with 4.21 to play. This is Sean Jackson. And he turns the corner the ball up to the 25 26 for seven yards and here's John Keith Tennessee quarterback Heath Schuler's at it again his second rushing touchdown of the game he's thrown for one as well you can see Tennessee and Alabama next week on ABC they lead Arkansas by two touchdowns meanwhile Jeff Brom of Louisville has just thrown for another touchdown to Jamie Asher his third of the day they lead West Virginia 28 20 Keith. put it on the 26 Make it second down, and that's a pretty long two. Make it closer to three. Warwick Dunn. And he's going to lose. Collins is cranking up now. He may. Coach sometimes doesn't like to put in a player, though, like Collins, as a muffin. I think the game, he realizes that the game is over with, and if he can get Collins some more playing time, uh, he'll really be second-guessed if Collins goes in and takes him right down the field for a score. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, you got to let him play, but, but he feels as though Costa is his man. You can't have quarterback controversy to all season. you got to pick one. This is done. Boy, can he scoop. back instead of a running back if Marquez Smith Smith and the been I mean if Tiger McMillan and the been hurt this guy can scoop true freshman 5'9 165 and Lewis the middle linebacker another the other true freshman both teams are young yes they are Jackson and Floyd come back into the backfield now, and it's first down at the Miami 48-yard line with 2.20 to play in the ballgame. 28 to 10, Florida State leads Miami. They run it in the middle. Pick up is about three yards. Well, you know, there was a time when it looked like uh, like Next on ABC Sports, second half of the doubleheader. I told you about those games for quite some time. Check your cable operator if you want to look about for a game that might be available on pay-per-view you'd like to see, and it's not being televised on your ABC station in your area. Oklahoma been a little bit of a surprise team this year, huh? So, yep. Well, the thing that woke everybody up was their win over Texas A&M. Uh -huh. Marquette Smith is in the backfield now. Smith carrying and he'll get one yard on that carry and we've come inside a minute and a half now so it's a matter of running out the clock this game is decided Florida State has won it they will continue as number one in the country Alabama is not playing today the number two team
The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Chris T. Jones of Miami and Charlie Ward of Florida State. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund for students who need some financial help. Jones caught seven passes for 86 yards for Miami and Ward. As he hands the ball off, and Miami swarms all over Marquette Smith. Charlie Ward is 21 of 31, 256. But when there had to be a persona to step up and take control of the ball game, he did it. And he didn't make the big mistakes. He didn't make the critical mistakes that, that hurt you when you're going. If, if you can't complete the ball, just don't throw an interception. Timeout called with 27 seconds remaining. It's going to be a mighty nice weekend. State now is charged with a timeout. Alexander comes over and says, who called it? I don't think anybody really truly knows, but somebody did. Well, if Florida State wins the... Man short, that's why. Yeah, yeah. If Florida State wins the national championship, they, they won't be uh, accused of dodging anybody. They play number three, Miami today. Number four, Notre Dame, as we mentioned. Number five, Florida. Later in the season. Well, Notre Dame is going to move up. They'll be third in the worst spot. Yep. Florida probably, if they win, they move up. They haven't dodged anybody. Dennis Erickson has won two national championships at Miami in his first four years. Bobby still looking for his first one. He's finished second, third, and fourth. comes hard, runs into the kicker, that gets a flag. Marley came blowing in and ran in to Sean Liss and did not get any part of the ball. And so that brings on the penalty. Dennis Erickson is cast. Lean eye on Marley's attempt at heroism there. Just trying to hit somebody. I mean, it's been a frustrating day. He's been about three inches short about half the time. Key word there is frustrating. Yep. Personal foul, foul, roughing the kicker on the defense. Automatic first down. Games coming up: Michigan and Michigan State, Oklahoma and Texas, and Washington and California. California. 33-yard line. The celebration is beginning in Tallahassee. The crowd of 77,813, record size, standing old for the home team. But they didn't exactly run Miami out of town, folks. No, no. Uh -uh. They've won the ball game. But the other guys are still looking them right in the eye.
Well, congratulations. Your back's got to feel a lot lighter now. Well, it really does. Uh, boy, that, the Miners are a tremendous football team. Wouldn't give up, but our kids wouldn't give up either. Another great Miami-Florida State game. Well, yeah, all concerned. You got the history of getting off to the fast start and Miami coming back. What was going through your mind? Well, I told them at the halftime, this is no different way it's been every year. We've got a little spurge going and we got the lead. They come back and beat us. So this year, our boys held on. Well, congratulations on the big win. Thank you, boy. It's a big one. Keith? Coach? And so it is done for Florida State. They remain number one as they beat number three, Miami.